वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर ऑन द इशू ऑफ फूड सिक्योरिटी एंड द ट्राइबल कम्युनिटीज कंटेम्पररी चैलेंजेस एंड पॉलिसी अल्टरनेटिव हियर माय लेक्चर विल बी ऑफ थ्री पार्ट्स द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज डीलिंग विद द स्टेटस ऑफ फूड सिक्योरिटी एमंग द ट्राइबल कम्युनिटीज और व्हाट आर द एविडेंसेस बाय व्हिच यू कैन से दैट there is food insecurity among the tribal communities who are the tribal communities the tribals are the 8% roughly 8% of the indian population who live mostly in the remote areas isolated areas the literacy is very low they live in the forest areas they are dependent upon the forest for their livelihood and their education is very low and in that context they are not being able to come along with the mainstream of the society there are the there are the problems of a uh, livelihood there are the problems of education health and other areas of concern in that case why the travels should be seen in a different way that is the first part of my presentation and second part is the what are the different threats for these people for example deforestation is there there are the issues like climate change environmental changes are there industrialization is there all these issues are responsible for the food insecurity among the tribal communities and in the globalized world we are taking them into such a situation that they cannot survive in their own environment own forest own habitat and they will have to do something else for that whose responsibility is it the state or they themselves can do it can we achieve a sustainable livelihood for the people by which there they will be secure in the coming ages and third part is what are the alternatives we can think of because india is the largest pds supplier of the country the entitlement is very high it is as a responsible state it is giving all kinds of uh, subsidies all kinds of pds systems to the poor people coming under different categories of under privileged persons but again there are the issues like starvation deaths there are the issues like maternal mortality child mortality all these are very high particularly in the tribal pockets for that can we think beyond this state given entitlements or can we think something for a kind of agricultural system by which we can do something for the security of food security of these people so the very first part is what is food security how defines food security as in this way food security exists when all people at all time have physical and economic access to sufficient safe and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs and food preferences for an active and healthy life but again when we aspire to have all kinds of things like qualitative and quantitative areas of food for all sections of people at all time it seems like a ideal type only but in practical sense what we are doing that is the issue three issues come when we define food security the very first is availability food security involves the availability of food quality good quality food nutritious food from local regional and international sources because the food is not only of indigenous issue it comes from outside also but it should have the good quality it should have the nutritional values more than other concerns second issue is accessibility accessibility means it involves the physical and economic access to enough food for an active healthy life and third one is the stability stability means involves the stability of food supplies that is the availability access to that food and the utilization of food consumed anything that interrupts food supply and access to interferes with the utilization of food will lead to food insecurity these are the three areas accessibility availability and stability which determines the food security of a population evidences show that the tribal communities in india 
are having lot of problems related to food uh, food and uh, their livelihood because three major criteria we can see first one is poverty index second is maternal mortality and third one is child mortality if we count all these statistics then we will find that there is a huge difference between the tribals and the other communities in this regard we will first if we see the poverty indices here they account for a fourth of population living in the poorest while they decide their poverty rates are closer to where the general population was 20 years ago on finding say genes if we talk of maternal health there is much more ground to make of this takes starkest markers of tribal depression child mortality under five mortality rates among tribal children in rural areas remains startlingly high as about 100 deaths per thousand live births in 2005 compared with 82 among all children age decomposition of mortality rate suggests that rural scheduled tribes children start on par with other groups but are more likely to die by age 5. Several explanations are offered for this. First is scheduled tribe children are less likely to receive qualified medical assistance as they grow off. But the major cause is again food. In most states in India, scheduled tribes are physically isolated, concentrated in remote regions and districts and in hilly and forested areas with poorly staffed health centers, limited coverage of all weather roads make transportation in emergence virtually impossible. What are the different threats for the food security of the tribal communities? To make a brief categories, you can say that these are the five categories. The first one is population growth, second is climate change, under that we can talk of deforestation, industrialization and mining. Third area is gender inequality, that is a social issue. Still, there are the differences between male, female, children, and adults when food consumption is concerned. Fourth one is tenure. Tenure means the source from where the food is coming, that is the land. If we cannot give the tenurial rights to the tribals, they cannot cultivate uh, the land, they cannot produce food grains and ultimately they are starved. This is one of the major issues when the law and society issues are concerned. And fifth one is the agricultural investment. Today we see that lot of investments are there by the farmers but the production or the outcome is very less by which they have to depend upon other sources for their livelihood like labor and other works in that they are not getting good quality food and they are malnourished. The first issue related to food security among the tribal communities is the how we look at the biodiversity because they are living in the forest areas and hilly areas. The biodiversity is a fundamental feature of agriculture system and human well-being. Biodiversity at three levels, ecosystems, the species, the content and the genetic diversity within species underpins much of modern agriculture as well as the livelihoods of many millions of people. The majority of today's modern crop and livestock varieties are deprived from their wild relatives and it is estimated that products derived from genetic resources including agriculture, pharmaceuticals, etc. is worth an estimated 500 billion dollar per annum. So, around 1 billion people rely on wild harvested products for nutrition and income and the individual trade in wild resources is estimated to generate 90 billion dollar per annum. In India alone, the livelihoods of around 6 million people are maintained by the harvest of forest products and mostly of the tribal communities. And in this context, we can say that there is huge business in the environment, in the forest where the Adivasis are living and because of that they are, the Adivasis or tribals are deprived from their income sources or the livelihood 
from where they were collecting the food grains, they are collecting the timbers and all this are diminishing. Second issue is population growth. Third one is climate change. In general, the, because of climate change around the world, the most affected are the people who are living in the forest. Mostly, they are those who are living in the inaccessible areas. They are paying the cost for the urbanization, paying the cost for this industrialization and activities because of the human welfare and other activities. Next is tenurial rights. We have lot of land loss, we have forest loss, we have the environmental loss in which we are unable to give justice to the Adivasi communities and they are unable to cultivate their own land also which they were cultivating since historical time. Because of that it is leading to malnutrition among the tribal children. Coming to the third part of my presentation, if we summarize the issues like the evidences of food insecurity and the threats of food, threats to the food security of the Adivasi communities, we can say that the entitlement like PDS and other systems given by the government is not enough. In that case, we can think of green economy, for example, what MS Swaminathan Foundation is thinking of. Green economy means we have to go for organic farming, we have to because we have to go for organic farming, we have to go for the agricultural things in which the Adivasi communities are very much perfect. We cannot give them the outsiders inputs, outside technology and all this. They have to be promoted according to their indigenous knowledge. They have to be promoted according to their indigenous ideas related to agriculture, related to free food culture, preservation, food collections and everything by which we can think of. The very first area of Methodologically, we perceive the things of food insecurity and the other areas of concern. It can be of two parts. The very first is the issue of functionalist perspective. What the functionalist within the field of social sciences and the environmental sciences are thinking that the resource control perspective which considers intra-household food, food allocations in relation to who controls which resources. Here, there are the social inequalities which should be the gap should be filled off the gap should be minimized by which every household is getting the food available in and around them second perspective is the environmental perspective it refers to energy that is materialism and to relation to say that idealism and holism in terms of biophysical factors and culture because food is not only an issue of diet, not only an issue of filling of the uh, stomach, but also it has the energy value, it has the relationship with other categories like uh, digestion, it has the issues like environmental things to be considered, how, how, how much food you are taking, the calorie intake is, matters, not only the quantity, quality also matters. In that context, lot of uh, civil society organizations and also government has started lot of skills by which the people will get good quality food within their surrounding in their own field they can cultivate the, they can cultivate such foods which are nutritious and it will have a long term impact upon their health also for example the participatory research for livelihood security first one is the participatory research for livelihood security it has two parts one is participatory plant building and innovation and second part is livelihood options. Participatory plant building means there are a lot of genetic contents surrounding to the Adivasi tribal communities. Those varieties are rare species, they can be of wild varieties, those can be having good quality nutrition which are not there in the uh, varieties we are cultivating these days because we are dependent upon pesticides, fertilizers and other areas. Those plant varieties which are indigenous they have the nutritional values which can be used for the betterment of their tribal communities. Second one is livelihood options. If we see the livelihood option of their tribal communities within their surrounding, they can cultivate it because they need not to depend upon 
the varieties which are available with them, they can cultivate it with their own knowledge, with their own system of uh, water availability and accessibility. But they need not to depend upon the outsiders for all this technology and all this agriculture technology. Second area is integrating traditional knowledge with improvement options for enhanced livelihood security of the poor. Third area of participatory research for livelihood, it will also improve the capacity building training institutions and farmer sites. How it will do? Because the farmers of the community, they themselves know that what are the things, what are the plants they have to cultivate, what are the varieties of rice or pulses they have to cultivate, they know it. In that sense, they can advocate for themselves when outside market is coming to their area or surrounding to them. So, they will develop capacities related to Cultivation, capacities related to management, related to conservation of the seeds they are cultivating, the plant varieties for genetic content also they can advocate for themselves and they can advocate their own rights in that sense that we can call it farmers rights. Second thing we can implement is the gene bank. Gene bank means the participatory plant breeding, breeding the varieties which are adapted to local agroclimatic conditions, efficient in the use of water and nutrient resources and amenable to agronomic practices. Here all the varieties of cereals and pulses they have their own genetic content. If this genetic content will not be cultivated for long or there will be the outsiders plant varieties coming to that area. This original varieties or the traditional varieties may lose their identity and they may lose the existence also. In that case, if you can pitch up the plant varieties which were producing good uh, quality nutritious food, that can be pitch up through the banking system. Banking system not entirely at households uh, in the community but it can be in the fields only. In the agricultural fields, we can cultivate the indigenous varieties, the traditional varieties of plants by which we can create a kind of genetic uh, gene bank and that will be replicated for other areas or other populations or throughout the time for the next uh, generations or coming generations they can use that plant varieties available for them. Here how the travel farmers are benefited because of this gene banking. First one is an option for higher production for non-HYV farmers because if we use the HYV or high yielding varieties of plants in that case we are using it for the production only quality production quantity production will be there but quality is lost which the traditional varieties had it second is the conservation of people's local varieties the local varieties are rich in nutrition and that can be and also medical value medicinal values value is there. In that case, that can be preserved. Third one is traditional knowledge of seed selection and profitable use for of it. Seed selection means the community they were using the traditional varieties according to the relevance of the field, according to the uh, rainfall, according to the season and according to the timing they were using it. That knowledge is lost and that can be preserved. Fourth one is sustainable pathways for poverty reductions. Poverty can be reduced in the way that the high yielding, if they go for traditional varieties, now the market has, such, has been such that people have been very aware of the um, traditional varieties and uh, people, means a lot of markets are there where traditional varieties have a lot of demands. In that case, they can buy it in the market and they can be economically viable. The next area of application to secure food security among the tribal communities is grain banks. What is this grain bank? Grain bank means it is a community grain bank. It is a decentralized form of grain management and distribution. It involves collection, conservation and distribution. The community itself will be responsible for the collection of grains, different varieties of grains and it will store it and whenever there is a need, it will redistribute among the community members. So, 
what are the objectives of this green bank it is to ensure food security during natural calamity or lean period lean period means particularly after uh, june july june july the lean period starts and for four five months the community is deprived from food grains at that time suppose there is storage of food grains that can be taken by the households for consumption second is to allow the needy people to borrow food from the grain banks at and when the needy people comes in front they can have this food from the grain bank they can buy it or they can take a loan also third one is to break the money lenders trap of debt and bondage because in the tribal areas the money lending is so high that the poor tribals are entrapped in that format and they have to give access um, access return for that and to control this money lenders activities money lending lending activities there is the need to develop the ideas like the green bank to control migration at the community level because if we see the migration is very high in the tribal areas they are going to the urban areas for labor work for job means uh, as, as a laborer and in that case they can that can be controlled they will be there in the community if they get the food at their time of need the same food which they have deposited in the grain banks when they had the surplus food how the farmers are benefited because of grain banks the first is reducing the dependence on money lenders and saukas which is very prevalent in the tribal areas second is creating a sense of unity and integrity among the people if the grain bank is there then the community is united they will have to be united because they have to defend their own grains from outsiders like they have that have not been looted or within the community there will be the social cohesion because one family is giving excess grain to the bank and that is if that is used by the needy households then there will be the social cohesion there will be the integration among the family households third one is empowering their decision making how that will empower the decision making because the dancers are taking the decision that will save the food will um, pick up the food and at the time will take it so it will take the it will develop their decision making also in which earlier they were not getting the chance to the people are gathering courage to raise their voices against exploitations if they are not hungry and they are exploited at that time they can raise their voice against exploitations by the outsiders the practice of savaging is developing in the mind of the tribals pra practice of saving because they had no idea of savings now they are developing the idea of savings it must be saved the grains must be saved the other areas uh, which are there of their life that must be saved in that case they have the idea of saving is developing <clears throat> next uh, applied area for food security is community hunger factor teams can be formatted what is this community hunger factor schemes this is that they are, they are the trained members within the community some of the members are trained they will be getting training on pds or the other government entitlements and they will come to the village and they will teach the other com other village fellows that these are the schemes available for us and we should take benefit of it so that can be encouraged uh, in many instances it has been found that the community hunger fighter teams and increased community involvement in issues related to malnutrition the mothers have been empowered to freely discuss the provisions of food at icds requirements of iron tablets and nutrition for pregnant mothers because some of the trained hunger fighters they are coming to the village and they are discussing two areas one is the health areas and second is the food available in that case they are empowering the other members that we should have we should go for this type of benefits because it is there and in many instances there is no awareness in the tribal areas that what kind of entitlement they have it the this 
community hunger fighters will help them to develop this kind of knowledge to summarize this we can see that there are a lot of government initiatives to reduce poverty to give food grains but these are not having sustainability because giving always in a kind of welfare job is not a good idea it is the requirement that the adivasis or the tribals the dancers are engaged and they produce food grains for themselves good quality foods good quantity of foods then only there will be the there will be the chance to reduce poverty and malnutrition in the form of food security so the agricultural practices of the tribals are ingenious systems of organic cropping which is well adapted to local conditions in moist forest and hill tracts where the monetary and energetic output input ratio is higher than other forms of agriculture significant use of the indigenous knowledge system by the tribal can be seen in their various agriculture practices considering the ecological limitations tribal use the lands in the best way that is sustainability outside the intervention in the form of industrialization or changing agriculture practices seem to be unsustainable and it will help them to go for a better life thank you very much